Welcome back, guys. So much to talk about in this nuclear news. I found some really good stuff. So let's get into it. A lot happened this week in the world of nuclear. First of all, price action. Totally diverging from the fundamentals of the asset. The URNM ETF down 5.94% on the week. Trading in tandem, hand in hand with high risk assets. ARK Innovation ETF down 3.34%. The chart looks identical. So just moving base off of nothing other than macroeconomics, the Federal Reserve threatening this rate hike cycle, for which there will be. And I think there may be one or two hikes. Uh, Obviously, they're not going to be able to get that many in before something breaks devastatingly. And they're going to have to stop hiking rates. But what's going to happen? They're probably going to get one quarter point in when they feel comfortable later in the year. Then maybe one more, probably mid-year. So essentially, this is fear driven by the narrative. But like every other rate hike cycle in the past, it's probably not going to manifest into something material until something actually breaks. So for now, we're looking at fundamentals. So what happened this week? First of all, some of the most bullish possible news I could bring you in nuclear power. Manchin just gave Biden a path for his green goals. I'm big on nuclear. Nuclear power plants would get tax credit after spending bill. Manchin-backed plan could prolong operation of existing fleet. We've talked about this a little bit before, but the point is here that if nuclear power plants get tax credits, then you're going to see massive investment in them. And this is obviously going to be extremely bullish for nuclear power in the United States, the world's biggest economy. And so as nuclear investors, we're looking at you know the uranium miners, but also possibly a new scale or some nuclear tech companies, but we're bullish the price of uranium because it hasn't moved enough to incentivize the supply. Look at all the stocks that you could possibly invest in. Most of them are dormant mines. You have the Camco, you have the one in Kazakhstan, Kazatomprom. But other than the big guys, not much has changed, even though the fundamentals have radically changed. The supply demand fundamentals have done nothing but got, get better and better for uranium spot price investors, especially given the fact that Sprott Trust and other Wall Street entities are taking supply off the market. So let's dig deeper into what other fundamental movements are taking place in this space. The U.S. and China could soon be in a race for nuclear-powered satellites. An idea from the 1960s has found new backers. If future U.S. satellites are to dodge incoming Russian or Chinese fire, they'll need better ways to move around than today's fuel-intensive thrusters. That's why the Pentagon is looking into nuclear-powered propulsion. So, obviously, the market is realizing that Sustainably long-term cheap energy through nuclear power is much better than just burning fuel and gas uh, in order to get this stuff into the air. So clearly, you know, people are bullish on space exploration investments and nuclear is going to power space exploration in the future. So people aren't going to be stacking barrels of oil on their spaceships as they try to get around the galaxy. So Just another fun bullish article there. This one is crazy. France's nuclear champion sacrificed to stave off energy crisis. This is a little sad and pathetic, but we have to read into it. So high energy prices bearing down on Europe's economy like the freight train. And France just pushed its largest electricity producer into the path of the collision. The government will force Electricité de France to sell more power at a discount. So they're forcing essentially their only productive source of power to lose money at a steep discount, boosting both the economy and political fortunes of the president at the risk of breaking the backbone of the country's energy policy. So this says a whole lot that nuclear power is the backbone of France. And it's just sad and shows mismanagement by government, which is pretty typical, unfortunately, when it comes to energy policy. The French government decided that it must protect consumers, and that will be done at the expense of EDF. Yet the extra burden is being imposed when EDF has never been weaker. It is struggling with costly maintenance problems that has kept its aging plants offline. 
here is a chart of the power surge of French electricity costs as the EDF reactors went offline. So this news article to me screams that more investment is going to be needed. And we already know more investment is coming in the nuclear space in France. And it tells a lot that the one productive source of energy in France is nuclear. And it's pretty much their, their lifeline. And so it just means that they're going to pump more money into it all across Europe. We talked about how finally nuclear energy was classified as green. And so if in this example, their only hope is nuclear power, then we can probably assume that in the future, they're going to rely on it more and more as they get more and more desperate. So just another sad article, but also bullish nuclear power article as this crisis gets worse and worse and worse. All right, this piece I am extremely excited about because it lays down kind of the long-term fundamentals of the uranium sector and why as investors, we should be excited about it. So it's by The Economist, very well in-depth article on the situation globally of the uranium market. And so as we see the price come down, this helps value investors realize that prices detach from fundamentals. So the Kazakh crisis is only one threat hanging over the uranium market. A global crunch in nuclear fuel is no longer impossible. The immediate impact of Kazakh turmoil may be limited. We talked about how Kazakh is essentially the largest producer of uranium worldwide. So any disruptions causes the price to spike, right? Any shortfall may not matter much for now. Big buyers of uranium, such as China and France, which are heavy users of nuclear fuel, have several years worth of inventories. The most exposed utilities could borrow from foreign peers in case of immediate shortages. Most of them buy nuclear fuel using long-term contracts that largely insulate them from short-term jumps in the spot price. And all this creates a buffer against a squeeze. However, the events in Kazakhstan, which for decades was the world's most stable uranium supplier, may eventually jolt buyers into guarding against the risk of relying too much on a single source. A day may come when the Kazakh government falls or state assets come under attack. So consumers are looking to diversify their sources of supply. A rise in overall demand, which we've talked about, could lift prices further. From Belarus to Bangladesh, many emerging markets are going nuclear to help them decarbonize. China is planning 150 new reactors in the next 15 years, even in the West, which has long been ambivalent towards nuclear energy attitudes are changing. We talked about Manchin. The European Commission plans to class nuclear as green in its taxonomy for investors. Talked about that as well. New Scale, the first firm seeking to commercialize small modular reactors to be approved by American regulators, is preparing to go public. Talked about that. Beyond the near term, supply may not be able to rise quickly enough to satisfy greater appetite for the metal, supporting prices further. New mines are planned in Africa and Americas, but they require a price of at least $50 to $60 per pound of uranium to be profitable. If a rise in demand of 2% a year between now and 2030, a conservative estimate is to be satisfied that all those projects will need to be up and running, says Tim Bergen of Calderwood Capital, a hedge fund. That may not be realistic. One such mine in Canada is under a lake, which involves freezing the ground up to 400 meters below the surface. The price of fissile fuel may become increasingly flammable. This summarizes the situation. There's bullish developments all over the world. The supply crunch is here. This article summarizes it. So this is why we're bullish uranium and why opportunities where the market decides to overreact to a potential rate hike narrative should be celebrated potentially if you have some dry powder and want to buy things on discount, which obviously, as we know, all successful investors do. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is going to be a really exciting year for the uranium space, guys, and nuclear power overall, as you can just see. So we'll do everything in our power to keep you informed. This discussion is for informational purposes only. Nothing in this discussion should be taken as investment advice. Guests are not compensated for their appearance. Do not base any investment decisions on the information presented.